What's up guys? Welcome back. Amazing RC. Today we're going to do video number three, custom Hot Wheels axles. So I'm basically going to go over everything that I know that I've learned over the last year and a half to do custom axles. Basically the couple secret ingredients that are needed and uh, where I failed in the past, kind of things fell apart, and how to make sure that you get really good, nice set of axles for your custom Hot Wheels car. So the very first thing that I found, because sure, you can get cars that'll do uh, an exact swap. You know, I've got this 96 Impala, old M5 BMW. These wheels literally swapped over from one car to the other. These were the wheels that were on this car. These were the wheels that were on this car. And, you know, it works. No custom axles needed. They were exactly the same width. Super duper easy. This is not that video. This is basically how you get any wheel you want to fit in any car. Now, we're just going to go over the axles. So, cars like this, which needed extensive chassis work to get all this fatty fat rubber underneath it, that's going to be in video number four. This video starts with the number one secret ingredient that I had been searching for for years and years and years. This is the Burbank House of Hobbies. This is the store I get my axles from. Basically, it's a little brass tube. You get three of them in this big long tube here. And all it is is a 1.1 millimeter outer diameter tube and a 0 0.9 millimeter inner diameter tube. Now what this allows you to do is basically take any regular axle from Hot Wheels, chop it in half, and use that stock axle and it'll fit right inside this little tube here. Perfectly fits inside it. I mean with almost zero room left, it creates one very solid axle. Now I have failed a few different times in trying to get this, you know, to work correctly. I've tried to use super glue. I've tried to use, you know, just all kinds of manner of, of whatnot. But over all of my failures, I feel that I have come up with the perfect recipe. These literally are not going to fall apart. I could take these axles right here from this 57 Chevy and take both wheels and I can pull with everything I've got and the axle itself, the brass tubing, will finally snap in two before the Hot Wheels axles actually come out from the brass tube. So this is a surefire way to get it right. Take my failures uh, as your failures. Not that difficult to do. Uh, it really allows you to get some really nice cars going. I even got a, a fifth wheel in the back of this one. Did the exact same thing. You know, used a little tiny piece of scrap tubing I had and glued it into the back. And man, some of these cars, they just come out really, really nice. So, Burbank's House of Hobbies. I'll have a link in the description section. This tube with three full tubes inside of it. I think it's about $10 shipped to your house, less than 15. It does not cost that much. And I, out of one of these with three in it, you're probably going to get between 25 and 35 cars. Remember these axles, some of them like this charger, I mean, they're a half an inch long. So you're literally using one inch of this long tube to do an entire car. So you can get a lot of cars. You're going to get a lot for your money. This is secret weapon number one. You're going to want to have these. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but as far as what I've found, this is the best way to do it. The, the top customizers out there are using these brass tubes. So basically, what you're going to want to do first is figure out what wheels you're going to use and what car you're going to put them on. And I like to get everything all set up. You got every time you, you open up a car to, to, to jack its wheels out of, you know, you're just going to start collecting these little axle halves. I just use a little magnet and put the little axle halves on it. But you need to have your wheels ready to rock and roll. These are already ready, but if you need to find some wheels, you can go on AliExpress. 
and you can get, and I'm not going to say cheap knockoffs because they're, they're okay wheels. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, it's AliExpress. So you're going to be buying, uh, to get a deal, you're going to be buying 90 sets of wheels, you know, for 60 bucks. And, you know, me personally, I'll just go to the store and get a premium car like this one here and get a really cool set of wheels out of it. And sometimes you can get a really nice set of wheels like I did out of this killer Mercedes and then put really nice plastic wheels back in it and it's still a really nice display car. Went ahead and glued up the bottom just like I would do in any custom car and this technically is a custom car. So it sits right up on my shelf. So have your wheels ready. Go back to video number I think two where it tells you how to get into these cars or one of the series and just I just go ahead and grab, especially if they're on sale or something, I'll grab a few of these cars. Look for the themed cars, especially at Walmart. Things like Jurassic Park or Scooby-Doo, those will be on sale sometimes. They just, people just don't buy those for the most part. And they still have really good premium wheels and tires on them. So I've snatched up a ton of really good wheels and tires from those cars. You don't necessarily have to get, you know, a brand new Porsche and tear it apart. You can get some really crazy funky car. Oh, the Batman series, the DC Comics series. Man, I was getting all kinds of vans and big motor homes, and they had some really good wheels on them. So I was chopping them all up all crazy, and I just start stacking the wheels up. I got my own little, 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 you know, sectional right here with all kinds of little parts ready to rock and roll. So as far as the axles go, you know where you're going to get your axles. You know where you're going to get your wheels and tires. Again, AliExpress. And go on eBay. eBay. Mercari, other people have done the AliExpress thing for you, and then they're gonna sell you the wheels ready to rock and roll in smaller sets. So you don't have to go get a bunch of wheels. You can either do it this way, or you can search on some of those websites. So how to get this big old long thing in here. Very first thing you wanna do is take your stock wheels, which I have them here, and pluck them out. All I do is take a pair of needle nose pliers most of these you're not going to use some of them you will if they're nice then you know try to get them out gingerly but basically just take you know your needle nose pliers and grab one wheel and if you pull straight up it will pop this entire axle out of the plastic and it really won't hurt not only the axle which you can cut later and use in one of your custom cars but most of the time you can save the wheels as well now i'm probably not going to use the lemon yellow wheels on anything but I do want the axles, so we're gonna go ahead and save that. Once you get that pulled out, and that's for the regular plastic chassis cars. When you get into your premium cars, that's different. We'll show you that in a second to get those wheels out. Now, to get this to go inside here, this is obviously a tiny bit bigger than the regular Hot Wheels axle because that fits inside this, not huge, but it is bigger. Get yourself a little flat head, get in there where that axle was, and just knock those little tabs out. If you just go back and forth with a nice flat head and kind of pry the little tabs out, and you you know, you can get in there with a little magnifying glass, make sure that you're in there, you know, nice and neat, but you should be able to take this and slide it through the axle on the other side, and it shouldn't go anywhere. Even if it does fall out, that's fine too. You just want to make sure it's in there flat. You don't want it to, you know, be all cattywampus or crazy. Once you get it like this, you're going to want to mark this thing and get it cut out. I personally like to use a little red fine tip Sharpie. Take this little guy. You want the axle to be poking out of each side of the chassis by like a 64th of an inch, the tiniest bit, just enough to where if you take your finger and rub it on the chassis, you can feel the axle poking out. You don't want it to be too small because what you're gonna end up doing is taking your nice new rubber wheel and you're gonna glue it to the chassis. You don't wanna do that. You're gonna want to make sure that it has just a hair on both sides. So stick it over on one end, you got it long on the other side, take your nice little red Sharpie here and just mark on the outside of the axle, just like so, and you're ready to rock and roll. Cutting this, super duper easy if you have the right tool. A really nice sharp razor knife. Get you a brand new fresh blade. You don't wanna use a dull one, because what you're gonna do is smash this thing. Get you a little piece of wood of some kind, just like this, and basically you're gonna take that nice red mark, you're gonna put this on the piece of wood, 
and you're just gonna roll underneath. You don't have to push really hard. Literally, you just roll it nice and smooth back and forth on your red line, and this actual little tiny piece will pop off. Now, keep an eye on it, because sometimes it really pops off, and you gotta go find that thing. And if it's really small, it's gonna take you a minute to find it. But very simple, that's how you get your axles. Then check your axle. Don't go gluing up your wheels and hope to God that that axle's cracked. Take your axle back and put it in there, the nice little piece, and make sure, get in there nice and close, and make sure that it sticks out just enough to be able to feel it. To be honest, you should be able to pick the axle up fingertip to fingertip and slide it right in just like this, and it should just click right into place. And if it doesn't, and little tabs are in the way, still a little bit of piece of tab, slide it in, you know, through the side. But it should stick out just a tiny bit both sides. I can't, I can't stress that enough. I've run into that problem myself. You're going to get your axles done. The wheels are going to be nice and free. You're going to be all excited. And then you're going to go glue your axle to the chassis. And the next morning you're going to come out and it's going to be stuck to the chassis. And you're not going to be very excited about it. So that's how we cut our axles. Boom. Front and back. Ready to rock and roll. Now, if you want to harvest wheels from a premium car, it's a little bit different. You can't just grab those with a set of needle nose come here you you can't grab those with a set of needle nose and just yank them out because the chassis of the premium car is metal that's the whole whole deal behind it being a premium car is this chassis is metal so this to be honest with you the best way i found out how to do it is just grind it down okay get your little dremel get a little get a little you can even use a little sanding drum just get in there with the corner of it. You don't have to push down hard. Just kind of go back and forth until you grind. You'll notice you're grinding it down. But grind it down until this will just come out. You don't even, I mean, you don't really want to pull this because you're going to ruin your axle. You want to save all these. Every single one of these, you're going to want to cut and save for a custom car later. Trust me, when you do this the first time, you're going to be hooked. And you're going to want to customize every car you've ever seen. So that's how you get those out of the nice premium cars. Now, installation. Now you gotta get your little axle halves. It's kind of what you call them, axle halves. You gotta get your little axle halves ready. You want to get four of those. You got your wheels ready to rock and roll. Let's say we're gonna use, you know, uh, let's say we use the big fatty fats here. So boom, you got four big fatty fats. You got two super duper big fatty fats. Two medium fatty fats, and they're ready to go onto the chassis. I have another secret weapon. I have found in 80% of the wheels and tires that I have installed that the, the little axle, when you slide it in through the top of the wheel, I'd say 80% of those are inset. The little tiny pot part of the, the axle itself will be inset to the rim. Which is great because you can get, and I mean, you can get these anywhere. You can get them at Walmart, eBay. These are those little teeny tiny moldable magnetic balls. Everybody's seen these. They come in a thousand different colors. You can get them for just a few bucks from whatever, wherever. I like to grab, especially, I use them on all the wheels, but especially if it's inset. If it's an inset rim, they're really great to work with for a very specific reason. Number one when you pop your little axle half in here, if it is recessed, which is an easy way to check, you just take, take your little magnet ball, throw it on top, but you can take this, and if you pull, it'll pop up. And that's because it's almost, wow, that, that almost came all the way out. It's kind of like a slingshot. You're pulling the axle down away from the ball because it's trapped up on the wheel, and letting it go, and it's like smacking the end of the magnet up, and it's kind of popping out. Now what that does is when you get everything glued up later on, that will hold that inner axle to the magnet, which is going to give, once you remove the magnet, everything's dry, it's going to give that wheel the tiniest bit of slack, micro tiny bit, and it's going to sing. It's going to be super duper nice because there are going to be times like these big fatty fats, these are flush. When you put the axle in here, even though we still are going to use the little metal ball, because it's for another reason, which I'll tell you about in a second, 
This one, you can tell, it doesn't, it do, well, actually, that one is a little inset. I think that the front mediums aren't. There's going to be some that aren't inset, but it's going to want to lock up on you sometimes. You're going to get everything glued up. It's going to be red. You're going to be all excited, and one of your wheels is going to be locked to that axle. Now, you're not dead. You can work that free. It happens, it happens a lot. We'll just go ahead and say that. It's not it's not a zero, zero thing for every car. Some cars you can get all four to be perfect, but that usually does involve these nice little magnetic balls. The other thing these are good for is once you do get this all glued up, let's say you got your, your axle on here, everything's shaved up, put it together, you get it glued up and you put it between two pieces of wood so that it can kind of hold everything together, that ball will hold that axle in. If you don't use a spacer like this, sometimes when you get everything glued up, this axle can work itself out some. So you'll you'll actually have the axle move itself and it'll go flush with the wood and it'll have a bunch of slack. Now it's not dead again, but it's not it's not good either. You're gonna you're gonna do this a couple times. This is, this is the best pointers that I can give you. I had a bunch of requests for this video, this one in particular. Uh, so, now we've got our wheels, we've got our four axle pieces, our little pieces of brass custom axle here. We're ready to rock and roll. Now, prep. You want to cut the axles to length. So you put the axle in, put your little magnetic ball on it. Bam, just like that. Got the other one, the other side, and then you have your brass axle. And you basically want these two metal axles to just barely not touch each other. You want as much equity inside that brass axle to glue as possible. Once you get all that trimmed out and everything's all nice and neat, you can, you can hold both wheels together and you can basically take the little axle inside and spin it. You'll know if it's too long because you're going to stick one axle in and it's going to push the other one out. Just get yourself some little cutters and just start... Trimming it back teeny tiny bit at a time until you get those axles trimmed out perfectly. Once you get those parts, get yourself a little piece of sandpaper, fold it in half just like this. And what I do is I hold where the little button is on the axle, I hold that in my fingers so you can't sand that. Take that axle, hold it in the sandpaper, and kind of move it back and forth. What this is doing is getting some grooves along that axle so that your glue has something to hold on to. Remember, everything's all smooth. You know, maybe that's not necessary, but I haven't had any fall apart once I got all of these little steps involved. Now you can see why I didn't use this video with the chassis video. This one's already running long. So basically, move it back and forth, spin the axle a little bit, move it back. You're getting some scratches in it. So all you want to do is get that thing all scratched up. Bam! Do that to all four of them, okay? Now you're ready to glue this thing. You really don't have to clean anything up because there isn't much to clean. To glue them, you're going to want thick CA glue. That's the yellow one. Now, I don't have it out here. Here's a picture of it. I don't have it out here because when you're not using it, you want to store it in the refrigerator. I've had my CA glue thin and thick for eight years, and they both have plenty of bottle left. And they're, they're perfectly fine because I leave them in the refrigerator. Gorilla Glue can stay out. No big deal. As long as you got the cap on it, you're good to go. So you get your thick CA glue. And you want a fifth axle. Usually a long one. Get yourself a nice long axle. And you're going to use this to basically glue the inside of your brass axle. So you got your nice long axle. You got your thick CA glue. You put just a couple drops. You're not going to need much. All you're doing is coating the inside of your brass axle. Get your thick CA glue, get a little drop on there, and then take your brass axle and basically take the other axle that's got the glue on it and just go back and forth. Boom, boom, boom. Back and forth. Dip it in the glue. Boom, boom, boom. You, three times. Boom, boom, boom. Then wipe it off with a paper towel, flip it over in your hand, and do it from the other direction three times. Now you don't have long from this point. It is the thick CA glue, so you do have a few seconds, but you don't have a ton of time. Remember, you got all your stuff set up. Your axles have all been trimmed. They've all been sanded. They all got the little tiny metal ball, the little magnet ball on them, and they're all set up, ready to rock and roll. Boom, boom, boom. All you want to do, once you get the glue inside that brass axle, 
is you take, after you wipe it off, wipe the whole outside of it off. Boom, boom, boom. Get your nice little paper towel, get it all wiped off. Because you don't want, you, you want the least amount, if any, glue on your wheel and tire. Because it's just going to cause you problems later. Take your axle and touch that drop of glue. Dink. One time. Take your brass axle and you just stick it straight in. Whammo. Easy peasy. Flip it over in your hand. Hold that magnet down so it can't go nowhere. Now that axle's trapped. Take your other axle that you have set up with your magnet. Put your finger on it. Touch the glue. Dink. Slide it in. Whammo. There's your axle. Basically, take your two pieces of wood that you got set up. Put your axles in be your axle in between it. Whammo, McBammo. The two magnet parts, the two little magnets will trap inside there and you're good to go. That axle will dry before you work on the next axle. Repeat that step to the next axle and you're good to go. That'll dry in probably 15 minutes. I will wait four hours. I, I just I just will let it cure because you're going to want to mess with it once you get to the next part, which is getting this worked all free, making sure that the wheels are 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 nice and nice and smooth and everything works good because you're going to get one that's kind of stuck and it might be really stuck. You're not dead. Totally fine. I'll show you how to fix that here in just a second. So now you've waited a few hours. You've got your axles all glued up nice and pretty. Now you take the little magnet balls out of them and set those off to the side back to your little thing here. You've got one solid axle. One wheel spins perfect. The other side doesn't spin at all. No problem. As long as you waited a few hours, don't do this in 15 minutes. It's going to feel like it's done in 15 minutes. Don't do that. Get yourself your, your little pliers here. Hold on to the axle. You know, I mean, you can squeeze. It's not going to hurt if you, if you, as long as your axles are long enough. And just kind of work that wheel loose. Nice and slowly work it loose. Now remember, if you use the little magnet balls, you should have that little tiny bit of space in there. So kind of give it a little pull and work it. Push it back in and work it. And you're going to carve off with the inside of that wheel that little tiny bit of extra glue. One of these was stuck. And, and they're all good now. It was this one. You can tell. That's free. And that rolls just for, for a second. And it'll slow down. It's probably not going to get much better than that. This side, free. No problem. This one rolls good. It'll, it's still fine. It'll, it'll roll fine. It's not going to hurt it. It might even be squeaky. No problem. You're good to go. Once you get your solid axles all nice and free and ready to glue into the car... That's a two-step process. Now, you guys remember, we basically took our car and we carved out that channel in there. Now you want to make sure that you can get the axle to fit in from the top because obviously you can't slide it in from the side. It's got wheels on it. So even if you need to take a little piece of sandpaper and fold it the other way, get in that little groove in there and just kind of work it back and forth until you can take your axle and drop it right in from the top. Same thing on the other side, work it back and forth. Super, super simple. Once you get both axles to fit in there, make sure that they're big enough. Sometimes your measurements were off a little bit. Maybe you cut the axle too short and the wheels don't want to fit. Get you a little block here of some kind, wrap it with sandpaper and get in there and just shave that thing out some and you'll be able to fit those wheels in. Once you have them ready to fit in there, now you're gonna glue your axle to your car. I basically take one of these little pieces of wood, I'll take a piece of tape, and I'll tape it down to the wood. Very simple, tape the chassis down just right across, make sure you got, you know, your wheels are, are good, especially if they're different sizes, make sure you set them where they go. Now this is what I do gluing them into the act to the chassis themselves. I use two different kinds of glue. This by itself works good, but I like to use both the CA glue and the Gorilla glue. Now, one thing to note before you start gluing, the interior portion of your chassis, which is where your seats and your your steering wheel and everything is, this part of your chassis has these 
little tiny indents on the bottom. Now what these normally do is they trap down your stock axle. So when this car all goes back together, this will actually push your stock axle down to the lower part of the chassis. So when this goes in here, it goes just like that and it traps. You got a little tiny hole. You can actually see the little tiny hole through there. That's where your axle goes through. This is probably not going to be big enough for your new axles. So you're again going to want to take a little tiny bit. Don't cut that off because you want to trap it down. I run into that problem. Learn my mistake from me, not you. I actually made a car for a buddy of mine, old old Uncle Lee, man, Bogue RC. I was so proud of that car. Man, as soon as he got it, told me he loved it, and he went messing with it, and the axle popped up because to save time, I used to cut those tabs off. Man, just get rid of them. I don't need that. Not no more. You want to leave those tabs. Basically, put, put your axles in there dry and, and keep putting this chassis part in here until you sand it down enough to where it sits flat. You want it to trap those axles in there nice and neat. Once you get that, that those axles are never coming out. It doesn't even matter if you glue them in there, which we will do anyway because it saves on vibration. Now you get your, your regular brass axles, you got them dry fit, you got your, your chassis piece ready to go, now you're ready to glue. Get it taped down to your little piece of wood here. I get the CA glue first. Take a little toothpick. Okay, now you got your, your little scrap card here. Get your CA glue, same thing you did with the axles before, a couple drops of the CA glue. And what I do is I'll take a toothpick and I'll get a little tiny bit. Doesn't need to be a bunch, doesn't need to. Take a little tiny bit and just kind of rub it on in there. A little bit of CA glue, little tiny bit, little CA glue. Go ahead and do the back as well. You can do both sides. As long as you don't have anything pressing against it, that thick CA glue will take a few minutes to dry couple drops, rub it on in that chassis, and get it nice and neat. Now, take your new brass custom axles and drop them right in place. Bam, bam. And now you want to make sure that you get in there and look and see the little gap you have between the inside of your wheels and this chassis. Try to center that gap as much as possible. It's just going to save you from a headache later on when your wheel gets glued to the chassis. Again, you're not dead, but now you got to work that wheel free again. And that's just, it's a pain, but sometimes you got to do it. If you get that nice and centered and you already had those wheels nice and free before you glued it down, man, you're good to go. It's going to be butter. So go ahead and get those axles in there. You don't have to press them down. You know, if, if it looks crooked, go ahead and get your little flathead. Just make sure you get it in there nice and flat. But it should suck right to that CA glue. You're good to go. Walk away. Four hours walk away. If it's got to be the next day, walk away. Do not do what I used to do and come in and be like, man, that looks really good. I want to test it because you're going to pull those wheels right off and you'll be very upset. Trust me. Learn from my mistakes. Once you wait four hours, you come back. That car, you probably, again, could just throw this right on there, build your car back up, and you're good to go. I don't do that. I will take one drop of Gorilla Glue and put it over the CA glue. Do not do them at the same time. They react to one another and it just causes a mess. But if that CA glue is completely dry, four hours, you can then put a drop of Gorilla Glue on it and it really locks that axle down. It saves from all the vibrations because this is almost like a liquid rubber. So once this dries, you're not gonna get any squeaks, any rattles, any craziness. It's gonna be super, super solid car. I mean, you roll this thing around I mean, this same included, man. I mean, this thing just rolls so nice. It feels good. It's almost like rolling a fidget spinner in your hand. Like, it feels right. It doesn't have any chatter to it like a regular stock car. If you take any of these, you can hear it. You roll this, you don't hear it. It's silent. It's just the way it is. Now, you've got... All that glued down, take one drop of your Gorilla Glue, take your toothpick, one drop on front, one drop on back. Again, walk away. You're done. Leave it, let it dry. Come back four hours later if it's in the morning or the next day. After that, you're good to go. You can theoretically just kind of roll it around. If you really want, if you want to just make sure the wheels are nice and loose, because if for some reason one of the wheels is still just kind of stuck, 
Now you can really roll it on a towel while it's a car. Flip it upside down so you don't put any pressure on the axles in the wrong direction. But you can really get it going now. After that, make sure that this still fits. Because remember, you just put some, some Gorilla Glue on there. It might have a little bit of a hump to it. Make sure this fits nice and flat. Build your car. Don't go you know, getting everything all glued up. Make sure you, if you're done you know, with the car and you're ready to glue everything together, make sure you put your glass back on it. Get everything put back together the way it was and make sure that the chassis fits correctly. You could have some extra glue. You could have, you know, something. Look at your front bumper, your rear bumper, and make sure everything fits good. If it doesn't, got to work on the chassis. That's going to be in the next video, guys. If you have any questions about this crazy stuff I just rattled to you for 35 minutes, comment section's yours. Ask me. Let me know. Uh... If, if I don't get back to you and this video is two years old, find me on one of my newest videos and I will help you out. By then, I'll probably know even more. Uh, guys, I've probably probably went, you know, the shortest amount I possibly could, but boy, did I rattle a bunch of stuff off. I really hope I didn't forget anything. I tried to add as many pictures as I possibly could and videos showing exactly what's going on. Later on, I'll try to put some breaks in the video so that you, they can be easily referenced. But that's everything I've learned so far with custom axles. I mean, this is my best example that I have. I usually sell a lot of my stuff, and I love doing these custom things. Did the 57, got this getting painted up for my dad. I just, I love doing it. And I've, I've, this has been a requested video for so long, especially by this gentleman here who is really wanting this car. He wanted me to do these custom how-to videos so hopefully i've answered some questions for you guys definitely check out burbank's house of hobbies until the next video which will be chassis work and trust me cars like this one to get all this rubber to fit under there and not be six feet out from the side of the car it's a lot of chassis work so that's going to be a pretty extensive video as well guys until next time it's brian amazing rc Custom Hot Wheels, video number three, axles. That's it.